medication bias, but I'm just a technology guy. I have no, I do not have the qualifications that you have. Um, so I will say that up front, we often steer the discussion away from that in certain aspects, you know, at mm-hmm. least in, in my, in, in my community, mm-hmm. but that's okay. Um, so we talk about doing that work to learn, to acclimate to those sensations so that you no longer yeah. fear them. And I, that, yeah. so anyway, you know, that, that's something that and, we and try and get people to work on. Yes. And there's clear evidence that we can actually rewire our brains when we oh, create you. repetitions and we, we form new neural pathways by new strategies over time that yeah. strengthen us and lessen the anxiety. And we are more capable. I think um, I'm, I'm not biased in the direction against medication. It's not mm-hmm. first order for me, okay. but because I in such profound help for yeah. so many yeah. that um, sometimes it just, it's a nice adjunct that has to be used sure. to get people sometimes being able to do the things at all. Yeah, to just get it started. No, I do understand that. Yeah. I absolutely yeah. understand that. I know it's a somewhat controversial topic, even in the industry, profession, not industry, you know, in yeah. industry yeah. profession. Yeah. yeah so, sure. so I think, you know, the general advice we could probably, I think we're sort of offering, or, or I hear you say and confirm or deny this is, you know, you work on everything. So people ask me all the time, like, how am I ever going to get back to being intimate with my partner? Well, you work on everything. You work on getting to the supermarket and you work yeah. on getting in the car and driving on the highway. Yeah. And, and then you'll be able, you'll be better able to get back to that, that setting of intimacy. Does that yeah. make sense? It absolutely does. And when I work with people who have um, struggles in their intimate relationship and it is anxiety based or it doesn't even have to be, but the couple, it's gotten so negative and everything that they're doing in the bedroom is no longer like they don't like it anymore. It's not positive. Mm -hmm. It's become a negative experience. We take everything in, in, in traditional sex therapy. We go way back to simple, simple, which means when I have a couple, I basically send them home with an exercise that says, I want you guys to give each other hands and foot massages and talk. Okay. And yeah. monitor and monitor yourself. And if that becomes too anxiety provoking, then how can you come at the activity in a different way? That's so very that you, good. So that you keep things um, not negative and not scary. And so that you walk away from the experience and it was mutually pleasurable, mm-hmm. mutually wanted, and you will do it again. Yes. And so when you start out really slow and add in, it's not near as threatening. What tends to be very threatening for people is the idea that I have to go out in there and I have to perform and we have to have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. And that's so pressureful. And there's so much demand in that, that that skyrockets their anxiety and they don't enter in at all. They just avoid. Yeah. And I think that that's the same as just about any avoidance that people are engaged yeah. in. You don't go from stuck on the sofa for six months to a trip to Paris. You have to build the small things you first. You have to build it up and at, at a repetition. And when, the, yeah. when you have those positive experiences, it encourages you to try again. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes we start way back there and it is kind of a, 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 a sexual desensitization because you're getting more and more and more comfortable. And if it ever becomes negative, then we take it back. Yeah, and yeah. Comfortable and connected again, because once people aren't relaxing and enjoying the experience, then then we need to pull in the reins a little bit. Yeah, because we no. want success. Because success breeds a want for more. Right, exactly, and yeah. and that's that that whole flooding thing we talk about sometimes. Like you don't want to do that because that no. can backfire. Yeah, that will no, backfire. You don't want to flood? Yes, you exactly. Through a flooding, there's also you know good evidence once you live through a flooding that you can and you will and you didn't. Yes. Die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And sometimes it's super effective, but you usually got to have somebody like you really deep in that, you know, if, and then managing yeah. that with you. So, yeah. yeah. So th- those are kind of nuts and bolts. But the other thing that comes up quite often is that connection. So yeah. when, when one partner is, is experience, you know, is in the 